So the density of a white dwarf, if you took a cup of material from a white dwarf, it would have the mass of about an elephant. Well, in astronomy, we get to deal with the extremes of density. So if we talk about the density of the universe as a whole, we think that the average density across the whole universe is about 10 to the minus 27. Now, that's a number that we can't really get a handle on, even as astronomers. But one way to think about it is that if all the mass were spread out evenly, you would go around, you would encounter about one atom of hydrogen per every cubic meter. That's how empty space is. Space is really very, very empty. OK, so a benchmark for density that we can think of here on Earth is water. So one liter of water weighs about one kilogram. So in the units we've been looking at here, we're talking about 1,000 kilograms per meter squared. So if you have a box that measures one meter on each side, you fill it with water, that weighs 1,000 kilograms, or a ton. So a star about the mass of our sun will leave behind something that we call a white dwarf, which is a very strange object, but also very dense. So the density of a white dwarf is um, about 10 to the 8 kilograms per meter squared, so 100 million kilograms per meter squared. But we can go even much denser. Neutron stars are the end states of stars, that, that when a star's gone through its entire life and just sort of collapsed down to nothing, um, sometimes you'll end up with one of these very compact objects. So you'll end up with something that has the entire mass of a star, like the sun, for example, compressed into a region maybe 10 kilometers across. And this is a kind of object where the matter has been squeezed together so tightly that all of the protons and electrons in the atoms have basically fused together to become neutrons. So it's just a huge ball of neutrons. It's essentially an, an enormous, giant uh, nucleus of an atom. You take that much mass and compress it down into such a small region. Remember, density is the mass divided by the volume. And now you've got a very big mass in a very small volume. So if you divide a big number by a very small number, you end up with a huge number. So something about the size of a small city. And this is, these are some of the highest densities that, that we can comprehend now. So if you calculate the density of one of these neutron stars, for example, you end up with a figure of around 10 billion tons per teaspoonful. So if you took a, a, a teaspoonful of neutron star, it would weigh about 10 billion tons. So when I learned about these concepts in, in, at university, uh, the professor that I had tried to make these more accessible to us. So for a white dwarf, the first object that I talked about, he translated those densities into elephants per cup. So the density of a white dwarf, if you took a cup of material from a white dwarf, it would have the mass of about an elephant. So you'd have to take an elephant, something, you know, several tons, and squeeze that matter down into something of this kind of volume. Now, for a neutron star, of course, the, the densities are even, even greater. For a neutron star, the unit that, that we learned about was Mount Everest per teaspoonful. So in this case, you take the mass of Mount Everest, the mass of a mountain, and you squeeze it down into a very, very small volume. And that's the density that you have in a neutron star. So if you took a teaspoonful of material from a neutron star, it would weigh about as much as Mount Everest. But one of the other things that tends to go along with neutron stars is they, they have very, very strong magnetic fields. And uh, so the magnetic field is so, so high that you actually end up, the magnetic field ends up beaming light. And so one of the properties of a neutron star is it can actually beam light very effectively. So we've just been playing around with some ways to sort of visualize these densities that we've been talking about. So we've taken some objects, some normal objects from any scientist's ob office. So a, a coffee cup being a very important part of the scientific process. And we're just imagining that we're filling this coffee cup up with paper clips at a rate of about one every second. The other thing that stars do is they rotate. And neutron stars actually rotate very fast um, just because they, they conserve their angular momentum. So just like a, an ice skater spins faster and faster as they pull their arms in, so if you collapse a star down to a neutron star, it spins faster and faster and faster. So you can have a star rotating a thousand times a second. Um, and so it has one of these beams of light rotating a thousand times a second. So you just end up with a lighthouse effect that the thing can flash past you a thousand times a second. So what you actually see are, are very, very rapid flashes of light every time the thing rotates. So we figured that with this pile of paper clips here, it would take us a few minutes at the rate of one every second to fill this cup up. When they're, when they're rotating in this way, they tend to get called pulsars. 
Um, and the way, main way people detect pulsars is with radio telescopes. If you point a radio telescope at the, at the sky, you can detect hundreds, if not thousands, of pulsars. Now, let's imagine that we wanted to reach the densities that we were talking about for white dwarfs and neutron stars. If we were to do this, of course, we'd have to pack the paper clips in much, much tighter. We'd have to squeeze them in. And if we keep, kept doing this at the rate of one paper clip per second, squeezing them all together, to get the densities that we see in a white dwarf, uh, we'd need probably about almost eight million paper clips. Into that, into that one cup? Into that one cup. And of course, doing this at a rate of one per second, um, this would take us about 80 or 90 days. Without sleeping, without stopping, without uh, resting at all, we'd have to do this for 87, 80, 80 to 90 days. And for a neutron star, if we were to continue this experiment, we would actually need seven quadrillion paper clips this time. Squeezed into the same volume, the same cup, we would need to squeeze in seven quadrillion paper clips. And doing it at the same rate of one paper clip per second, that would take me 220 million years. Should this be giving some people some indication of how much empty space there is in, in that side atoms? Oh, absolutely. Um, just like in outer space, uh, inner space, the space within atoms, is mostly empty. We live in a very, very empty universe, both on large scales and on strong, small scales. So there's a lot of room in here, in these individual atoms. There's a lot of room to compress them down in, 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 into smaller units. Um, but that's not the kind of compression that we're able to do um, here on Earth. We, like I said, we need these astronomical processes to actually reach these really enormous densities. Yeah, so not everything in, in astronomy is very, very dense. We also have very underdense objects as well. We talked about water being 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. But if we look at an object like Saturn, which is mostly a great big ball of gas, so Saturn being one of the planets in our solar system, it's a great big ball of gas, and a cubic meter of Saturn would only be about 700 kilograms per cubic meter. That's, that's less dense than water, which means, of course, if you were able to construct a bathtub large enough to contain Saturn, Saturn would actually float. So some of the some, some planets, like Earth, are very dense, they're, they're rocky, but some of the outer planets, like Saturn, are very, very, um, they're just big balls of gas. Um, and if you could put them in a bathtub, they would float.